So this should be an easy lesson, but before we get into too much here, I really want us to talk about this word rational. Okay, in, in the English language, rational usually means um, someone that has a, a sane mind, basically, and understandable. In math, rational, um, a lot of times, rational is just used synonymous with the word fraction. Now it has other things going on, too. But whenever you hear the word rational in math, we should also be thinking of the word fraction. So what we're doing in this lesson is we're talking about the properties of rational exponents. Now these are going to be the same properties as regular exponents, it's just now we're working with fractions, and I know you guys are really excited to work with fractions. Alright, but here we are. Um, I'm going to go through these, I guess, somewhat quickly just because I, I really think that this should be easy for us. When you have the same base number, and you multiply them, you add your exponents. So this is really 3 to the 1 half plus 3 halves. And thankfully it already has a common denominator. We add that, we get 4 halves. And 4 halves is the same, oops, too many fours. Um, 4 halves is the same thing as 2, so 3 squared is 9. It simplifies just like that. On uh, the next one, remember, when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply the exponents, and this is 2 over 1. So really, we're going to have 4 to the, well, the 2's are going to cancel. You have a 2 on top and a 2 on bottom. So really, it's just 4 to the 3rd, which is 64. All right, on our next one, remember, when you have, and this is very important, when you have a multiplication inside the bubble, and it only works with multiplication, it does not work with adding, you can distribute your exponent. So this would be 9 to the 1 half times 4 to the 1 half. Remember, a fractional exponent means a square root, so square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, and 3 times 2 is 6. Negative exponents, well, we've kind of already talked about that with this one, but negative exponents move it to the bottom, so this will be 25 to the positive 1 half now with a 1 on top. So this will be 1 over the square root of 25 is 5, so it will be 1 fifth. When you have a fraction um, in the same base, you subtract the exponents. So this will be 6 to the, well, 5 minus 1, since it's a common denominator, it'll be 4 halves. So this will be really 6 squared, which is 36. When you have a fraction to an exponent, you can distribute that exponent to both of them. So 8 to the 1 third is 2, because the cube root of 8 is 2. And 27 to the 1 third, the cube root of 27 is 3. So your answer is 2 thirds. All right, so this is a good spot for you to hit pause and try these ones on your own, um, and then follow what I do um, afterwards. But here, if I look at this, these are the same bases, and you add the exponents. So it'll be 5 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth, getting a common denominator. It'll be 5 to the 2 fourths plus 1 fourth, gives me 5 to the 3 fourths. And I can't take the fourth root of 5, so I'm actually just going to leave it as is. On the next one, I'm multiplying inside the parentheses, so I can actually distribute the 2. And remember, when you take an exponent to another exponent, you multiply. So this would be 8 to the 2 halves times 5 to the 2 thirds. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it will be 8 to the 1st times 5 to the 2 thirds. There's really nothing else we can do with that, so we'll leave it there. We're just trying to simplify as much as we can here. All right, on this next one, I'm going to distribute my 1 fourth to both of them. So it'll be 2 to the negative 4 fourths times 3 to the negative 4 fourths. Uh, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so it's 2 to the negative 1 times 3 to the negative 1. Again, the negative exponent brings it down to the bottom. So it'll be 2 to the first times 3 to the first on the bottom. And so it'll be 1 over 2 times 3 is 6, 1 sixth. Now be careful because on this next one we have um, sevens, but it almost looks like I don't have an exponent on top. Remember, if you're missing an exponent, you can always put a 1 there. So we're going to subtract exponents, 1 minus 2 thirds, or sorry, 1 minus 1 third. Um, and so then that would be 7 to the 2 thirds. Again, since I can't cube root the 7, I'll just leave it alone. And then our last one here, oh gosh, there's always a couple ways you could go about these things. Um, <clears throat> what I'm noticing, I'm actually going to do something a little bit strange. But what I'm noticing is they're both to the one-third power. So I'm actually going to undistribute that. So I have 12 fourths 
to the one third. So I undistributed, I took it out, and then it's still to the second. And 12 divided by 4 is 3, and that's why I did it, because I could actually divide those. And then I can't take the cubed root of 3, so I'll go ahead and just multiply these. So this will be 3 to the 2 thirds. Now, this next page is actually very similar to what we've been doing. The difference is, it's instead of as a fraction, it's written um, in the rational form again, where, um, where it's in the roots. So remember how I just undistributed? Well, now I'm going to put these together. See, if they're the same root, you can actually put them together under the same root. So it's 4 times 16, and 4 times 16 is 64, which is nice because now I know the cube root of 64 is 4. I didn't know the cube root of the other stuff before. So we got 4. On this one, I want to put them together again because they're the same root, so I can actually make it um, one fraction which is good because now I can take the fourth root of um, 162 divided by 2 would be 81 and the fourth root of 81 is 3. I suppose we should do plus or minus huh, if, since it's an even number here in the root. And that's it. So we're just simplifying using um, the exponent rules we already know. Now we're just working with fractions.